of the exciting things about coming to TED or watching TED, I did some bit of that in the course of the week. I had about five or six hours just watching a few TED talks all around. Is that you have a lot of young people, and just looking at you guys, I feel very old, all right? Now, the good side about being young is that you have all of your life ahead of you, all right? That is very good. I mean, maybe the most terrible side about being old is that you've had the best of your life in the past. But what I'm trying to do is to get you to think about being a global citizen, having the best life you can ever have. So just borrow me 15 minutes of your life, you know? Now, in the last couple of weeks, I think two, three weeks, there was a major news that broke about Google suspending Huawei. Who heard that? It was such a big news, right? But one of the things I considered was, why is it that it's only always about the Americans and the Chinese every time there's a major news? Don't you guys wonder? It's such a big bother for me. I mean, what is it about the world? You know, sometime in the past, I used to say one of the reasons why we've not had so many Nobel laureates is that the sun shines too brightly on Africa. And the downside is maybe it seems to dry off our brains or something. <laughs> I don't know. So I, I put some slides together, which was exciting for me. I mean, the percentage ownership of the size of the global economy, the United States, which is the leading economy in the world, they have about 25% of the global economy. The Chinese, they have about 15%. So I checked out what portion of the global economy Nigeria has. It was interesting. 0.37%. Just hold on a second. That's not the news, all right? We've got maybe 15 minutes more. <laughs> hold on a second. Now, the truth is, we both know, I mean, everybody in the room and myself knows, that if we want to compete globally, then the levels or the platforms are not level. The American child, if you're 21 or 22 or 30, the 30-year-old American child has got a lot more opportunities and some bit more advantage than you do. We know that, right? So the question is, if Africa is ever going to compete, if Nigerians are ever going to compete, then how on Jesus' planet are we going to do so? I've been thinking. I mean, if you really want to be a big boy, if you just don't want to be king of Ikeja or the chief in Abulegba, how exactly are we going to compete? Now, in looking at what has happened the world over, the biggest, the most radical change that has happened in our world is technology. I'm saying this not just because I'm a technology enthusiast or because I work in technology, but because I think somewhere in my mind I've cracked the answers or the formulas to the big time. I mean, I'm not saying if you really want to be rich, if you want to marry the best girl, have the biggest weight. I'm not talking about those kind of rich. And I'm not just talking about rich. I'm saying if you want to be the biggest guy possible, then you've got to have to leverage technology. So come with me some moment. So I looked at what exactly is happening. Sometime in 2016, I traveled. I went to Dubai. I mean, the third largest technology event in the world happens in Dubai every year, October. So I was fortunate. 2016, I traveled to Dubai. At Dubai, the conference is called Jitex. I'm sure some of you in the room know Jitex. After the one-week conference of about seven days, every day we're going to the conference, I went with a couple of friends. So when we got back, we were analyzing what is the biggest takeaway, what essentially is going to happen in the world. Because you know what? The quickest way to get to the top is to understand what the secret is. I mean, what everybody don't know. That's the trick, right? So we took out the biggest vista for progress in technology are about five things. I'm sure some of us in the room will know. The first one is AI, artificial intelligence. Now, if you say you want to explore artificial intelligence right now, God bless you. But myself and almost everybody in the room, we know that the levels or the platforms are not equal for the Nigerian and the American. In fact, while I was researching, there are just about 10,000 professionals that understand AI in the world. And I'm not sure we have 10 of them in Nigeria. It means that if you really want to make it big, exploring AI, we are at a disadvantage. If I were you, I won't even compete. The next one is robotics. Hello? It's like saying Nigerians want to compete with Chinese in making cars. We don't even have lights. I'm not even sure if the power we have here is not powered by generators. So the truth is, even though robotics is the future, robots are going to change, chase people away from jobs. Robots are going to become our drivers, our teachers, our helpers. The truth is, Nigerians are never going to be able to compete in robotics, at least in this point in time. We know that. So if you want to get into the big time, stop thinking about robotics. It doesn't make sense, right? 
The third one was VR and AR. I mean, VR is called virtual reality. AR is called augmented reality. So it's possible for me to be in my house and be having this session, and every one of you hearing me, that will be virtual reality. I mean, we don't even have real reality. I don't understand AR and VR and all these beautiful acronyms. Hey, we know the platforms are not level. It doesn't make sense. So if you want to get into the big time, don't waste your time. And so while I was wondering what essentially is the future of technology, how would a Nigerian in Ekeja, in Shomolu, in Bariga, and everywhere all around the country, how will an African compete? The last one was exciting for me because it gave us opportunity just as it gave the Americans. It gave us an opportunity just as it gave the Chinese. The last one is called platforms. Platforms. Some of them are mobile platforms. Some of them are web platforms. Now, some of the richest guys in the world currently are owners of platforms. I don't know if it was Tejo, but somebody was talking about Jeff Bezos. Who doesn't know Amazon? Okay. I was looking up the fact about Facebook, the world's biggest platform. There are 2.7 billion people on Facebook. And every day, 2.1 billion people must use Facebook. Every day. And Facebook is just what? A platform. Okay, maybe Facebook is too big. Who doesn't know Uber here? Hello? Uber, right? Who doesn't know Google? The web platform, the search platform. Okay, so maybe we shouldn't talk so much about the global platform because we all know them. What we don't know is that however tough Nigeria is, there's a lot of Nigerians currently building platforms that are changing the game. I mean, if you don't know about Remita in the room, can I see your hand? Okay, so maybe you change the room. Thank you. <laughs> but guys, borrow me your attention again. I mean, some of the biggest, most impactful things going on in this country right now are delivered through technology platforms currently. In fact, if you're in technology just as I am, if you're a young guy, we know the guys that are going to be billionaires anytime now. We know them. I mean, they are not getting government contracts. But we know that this guy is a billionaire. I'm saying some guys are in the room. I've seen them. We know the guys that are incredibly rich, not just because they are making money, but because they are solving problems at scale. So the question is, if Americans can build the biggest platforms in the world, if Chinese can build Alibaba's, and Americans can build Google, can Africans do it? The question is not even if they can. How well are they doing it? They're doing well. So the question is, no, not the question. The point being, there's an opportunity for everyone in the room. There's an opportunity. There's something we can do just as much as the Americans, just as much as the Chinese, for us to scale and get into the big time. So the question is, how do we do this? A lot of the time, we're solving the problem that somebody has solved. And so it makes it difficult and challenging to solve real problems. So what would I say? Let's get into looking at real problems. You know, about four or five, no, 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 about six or seven years ago, the governor, the then governor of Lagos State, Wabawas Tunde Fashola, he said his biggest sadness is that education has failed us. How many of us go to school to study accounting? I mean, there are maybe 500,000 accountants in Nigeria. How many of us go to school to study English when all of us started speaking in English from when we were two or three? And I'm not saying they are bad. I'm saying if you really want to get into the big time, then look at the real problems. So some of the biggest problems, they are all around us. Get into this place. How many of us saw flood driving here in the course of the week? Flood is a major problem. Who is solving that? Waste management is one of Nigeria's biggest problems. Who is thinking of that? Food security, food processing. Who is thinking? Crime. Hey, the big time. I was talking on one of my groups that there's a place that I drive through Somebody attacks me from time to time. Hello, guys, who is thinking about problems as an opportunity? I mean, maybe the biggest one now, security. I was telling my friend during the break that my biggest worry now is that maybe I'll be kidnapped or my mom will be kidnapped. Who's heard about the scourge of kidnap in the last few weeks? Before, it used to be that if you go to Sambisa or whatever the forest is, now if you just drove from Oshun to Ekiti to Ondo, you could be kidnapped. Who is thinking about these real-life problems? and turning them into solutions that can change the world. Who is thinking? So the truth is, first, we can do the same things Americans can do. One. Secondly, we've got the population. America is just about 300 million people. Chinese, uh, you know the Chinese, they're born, right? They're about a billion. Africa, we are 1.2 billion people. So we've got the population. Third, 
we have an understanding of the problems that Americans will never have. If they build the best platforms, they will never understand traffic the way we do. Americans have Uber. Do they understand Gokada? They will never understand the traffic in Ikorodo and Abuli Egba, even if they have Uber. So the problems are ours. The way to solve them will be ours. So what do we need to do? The first thing I will say, we need to encourage a lot more tech education. I've been in technology 11 years. I've never been able to code. Somebody, I was at a training last weekend, and somebody was saying, what's your biggest regret? My biggest regret is that I can't code. I wish I could. But guess what? We need to encourage a lot more tech education. There are some people in the room who are going to create the biggest game-changing solutions only if they could think in codes. The first one. The second one, we need to encourage a lot of business education. I mean, getting people to code is not even the problem anymore. The last administration, Lagos State government, I mean, the special advisor on education, his target was to empower 3 million Lagosians to code. I don't know if he met his target, but there are a lot of people coding. But turning codes into solutions, turning solutions into business is Nigeria's biggest challenge right now. So that is two. The third one, partnerships. I can't code. I've got some of my partners in the room. But in the last two or three weeks, I've been able to start businesses in technology, building platforms with people that can code. So what am I saying? I was telling my friend who is in the room, who is a banker, we don't even need to know how to code anymore. I'm already very old in technology terms. I'm sure you guys know. I mean, the guy I had a meeting with, I was meeting him and saying, you know what, I know I'm very old. I don't know how old you are. The guy said, I'm very old. I said, you're very old. How old are you? He said, I'm 22, but I'll be 23. Ha. Huh. And that is old. Me, I'm ancient then. Guys, we've got to explore partnerships. If you really want to break into the big time, if you want to solve big problems, my biggest strength is that I understand strategy and marketing. I don't need to know how to code. If I could put two coders together, we could build things that would change the world. The fourth one, which I think is one of Nigeria's biggest problems, is mopping up local funding and investment. I'll tell you two things. How many of you know about beautiful houses in Banana that are unoccupied? Meitama, Asokoro, Biggest uh, 1 billion, 500 million naira houses that nobody's occupying. Nigerians, we are so smart, and I'm sure you guys understand what I'm saying. I don't mean smart. We are so smart. We put investment, no, we put money in investment that are slow and draggy. When guys are exploring innovative ideas that can change the world. I was telling somebody during my break, I invested about 8 million naira in my farm. My farm is still struggling in Ogun State. But I could have invested just 1 million in one technology platform that would have changed the life of Lagosians, we should all be thinking. Muster all of the finances and funding that you can. If you want to get into the big time, think about it. And the last one, which I think is perhaps the most relevant for me, is that we've got to start doing now. I'll tell you this as I close. In exploring what is possible, my time is almost gone, right? In exploring what is possible, there are some things that we're strong at. I like the way that you talked to us about exploring our kingdom. I'll tell you what our kingdom is. Maybe we are not the smartest guys in the world. And I don't know, I'm just saying maybe. Maybe we are not the fastest guys. We know we can't run like Kenyans. Is that not so? <laughs> we know we can maybe build some things that the world can build. We, we can build cars, for example. But there's one thing we can do that we can compete with the world. That is our creativity. Nobody will understand passion and madness like Nigerians. Nobody will understand also like Nigerians. There will be no American that will sing Yoruba rap like Olamide. There will be no American, no Chinese, that will understand our also just like we will. If we've got this, which is a competitive advantage, why aren't we doing something about it? My charge is do something today, right now. Thank you. My name is Larry.